Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna talk about Apple again because why not and we're gonna compare the M1, the M2 and the M3 chips. So I already have done a video compared the M1 and the M2. I'm gonna pop it right here. Also you can check the description down below if you want to watch it. But there is M3 in the game. Yes I have compared the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro with M3. Technically I have been talking about M3 since it came out which was with the MacBook Pro last October, but I don't think we have compared the three chips together, like since the first one that Apple made M1 till the last one, which device should you get? Well, the only devices that have all the three chips currently are the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro. The iPads should get M3 when we don't know. The iMac has it, but it went straight from M1 to M3. There was no update with the M2, so technically we can't compare it because we don't have a device with such a chip. So we're limited to only two devices that has all of them. So if you have watched this video by MKBG or this one right here, you will know that he said if you have an M2 MacBook Pro, you don't need to upgrade to M3 MacBook Pro. And the same thing for an Air. The M2 MacBook Air is so good that you don't need to get the M3. But what about if you have an M1 MacBook Air or a Pro? Should you upgrade? Or maybe you should keep it for a little longer. You already know my opinion when it comes to an Intel MacBook, no matter which one it is. Everybody will say it. I'll keep saying it. Just upgrade to any of the chips and you will see immediate performance boost. But which one should you choose? Let's find out by checking out the statistics and compare every single chip in these MacBooks and see where the differences are, what are the key points for the creator and it depends on what you're doing in your laptop because if you're only going to browse on the internet without doing pretty much anything else m1 is suited for you maybe even on intel will do it but let's just say that if you also like doing a lot of other stuff you should consider getting one of the m chips first we're gonna start with the base macbook aka the macbook air it has always been like in the baseline, like nothing compared to the MacBook Pro. But with these chips now, people started comparing it with the MacBook Pro more often and they wonder what should I recommend to people anymore. Because MacBook Pro was always for the hard, intense tasks, you know, coding like hardware, editing and all these like things that takes a lot of processing that nowadays MacBook Air can do exactly this and people don't know like should you switch to an Air because it's a little bit cheaper than the Pro? Of course, the Pro still have some features that the Air doesn't, so people will switch to a Pro, but here are the basic statistics of how the chips has evolved into the MacBook Air. So, we are comparing the 13-inch MacBook Airs because with M1 we have only 13-inch, the 15-inch MacBook Air came with M2. So, M1 is 13.3 inches, while the other two with M2 and M3 they are 13.6 inches because they have changed the design a little bit now it looks a little bit more like the macbook pro also the bezels are thinner and you can see the tiny notch at the top which is actually your camera everything else pretty much is the same all of them have eight core cpu seven core gpu for the m1 while it jumps to 10 core gpu to m2 and m3 the battery life is still the same up to 18 hours all of them have Touch ID, you get only up to two terabytes. So if you need more storage, you should consider getting a MacBook Pro for this purpose specifically. And it can go up to 16 gigabytes unified memory when it goes to the M1 and 24 gigabytes unified memory when it goes to the M2 and the M3. So you see they're slightly evolving, but the base statistics look the same. So let's see where the bigger differences are, which consider people upgrading from M1 to M2 or maybe even to M3. What are the most noticeable differences when it comes to the M1, M2 and the M3 13 inch MacBook Air? So one of them is the camera. So on the M1 it was 720p while on the M2 and the M3 it became 1080p just like in the MacBook Pro. So these cameras are mostly used for FaceTime, maybe Zoom classes as well, or any other platform where you have your classes, conference calls. So I don't think people will use it to film their videos much because 
they either get a professional camera, use their phones, you know. I think 1080p is still a good resolution to post online that people still post HD, but I feel like they're slightly moving to 4K. Maybe after a few years, 8K will become a thing, you know, in the phones and just in cameras in general more popular. But another thing that has changed is the audio. So the M1 has only stereo speakers, wide stereo sound, support for Adobe Atmos playback, 3 mic RA with directional beam for me and 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, while the M2 also has support for special audio when playing music or video with Dolby Atmos on built-in speakers, special audio with dynamic head tracking when using AirPods 3rd generation, AirPods Pro and AirPods Max, 3 mic RA with directional beam for me, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack with advanced support for high Independence headphones and the M3 also has voice isolation and wide spectrum microphone notes, enhanced voice clarity in audio and video calls. So, as you can see, this is where they took the most to improve from M2 to M3 was their audio. They have added more features because they realized for what actually people use the MacBook Air. This is what they have tested in their factory before making it. And, like, okay, when you use like this for zoom calls, conference calls, or whatever you use the camera for, you also need to have a good audio. For example, I am screen recording my lectures all the time when I have it online, so the people who couldn't come to watch them, they can watch them later on. And I need to have a good crispy audio. Well, of course, it depends on if the teacher is close to the computer, close to the microphone, or it's far away, so this also affects it, but a good audio will definitely make my work way better. MacBook Air hasn't changed that much or to say evolved that much throughout its chips, but what about the MacBook Pro? Apple knows that these laptops are used for hard editing, which means like with higher resolution, maybe like 4K, 8K, hard processing text, maybe editing images like with LumaFusion or other apps, also like coding maybe some apps, websites and all this stuff, and you need a better laptop. So how it has evolved here we're gonna check out the basic statistics so all of them are 14.2 inches these are the models that i will compare with you today then we have for the m1 10 core cpu and 32 core gpu with the m2 is jumping to 12 core cpu and 38 core gpu and with the m3 is going to 16 core cpu and 44 gpu so as you can see with each chip apple is evolving their laptops the first one with the M1 has 17 hours of battery life, the M2 and the M3 have 18 hours of battery life. It can go up to 8 terabytes on all of their devices. It has jumped from 64 gigs of unified memory in the M1 to 96 unified memory with the M2 to 128 gigabytes of unified memory with the M3, which is impressive. Of course, you have to get it with the m3 max or m3 pro with the base m3 you can get only up to 96 but the fact that they these are the minimalistic things which apple is improving with every chip in the macbook pro means how much time they spent on their macbook pros because they know these are the devices that people use the most of course i'm not dashing out the macbook air some people use it because it became so good that all this comparison says that maybe for not that hard process you can even go with the macbook air people have tested it out done their basic editings and of course if you're not gonna max it out like your macbook pro with the air you'll be fine but you can see the changes that are going with the macbook pro which are absolutely stunning because you are doing this on a laptop every single chip you're improving more and more to give the customers what they want so you can still be in the top with one of the best laptops these are all the noticeable differences between the three chips when it comes to the MacBook Pro. So again, people like will have this question, okay, if M2 has most of the stuff that M3 does, why should I agree to M3 when I can have the previous generation for cheaper? And again, I agree with these people because honestly, like when you look at the statistic, it really seems like M2 or M3, they're just like copy of each other. But until you don't try both of them, you won't see the difference. And again, it comes the question like exactly what are you doing on your laptop and if the previous generation will serve you the same as the newest one, the best of the best, 
maybe you don't need to spend money on the newest and maybe even m1 will do you the job like if you are doing like again pro stuff but not that high intensive that you need the best of the best so i will say like the macbook pro mostly has evolved in its chip system well the macbook air as you see the most of the differences were with the origins and this is where they have paid most attention for because i mean it's apple they know what users use the most like which laptop they prefer for what they use it for and this is why they pay attention to both laptops in different places now to end this video i'm gonna answer the question that many of you might have should i upgrade to m3 and from where where equals from which chip so if you have an intel macbook air or a pro just throw it in the bin and get any of the m chips you won't be disappointed like there is no even that every creator will tell you this if you have an intel mac just forget about it first of all it's getting old second of all like the m chips are evolving so much from the intel that you won't be disappointed even if you get an m1 so now we're gonna start with the macbook air so as you saw like the changes which apple is making throughout their chips are not that significant with the macbook air so if you have an m2 macbook air i don't think you need to get an m3 it's just not necessarily like obligation for you well if you want to have the best of the best always keep up with the new devices then you can get it of course but the differences between the m2 and the m3 macbook air are so minimalistic that you do not need one maybe i should include even the m1 because yes you might want to upgrade but there is no necessity of this because again yes they have updated the audio system they have changed the camera if you use your camera like for a lot of conference calls and stuff like this you might want to upgrade from m1 but there is no like significant difference to make you want to upgrade but again from m1 maybe you should think about this but from m2 there is absolutely no necessity to upgrade to m3 this is not the case when it comes to macbook pro again intel macbook pro just throw it in the bin so the differences between m2 and m3 they're not that big so i really will say no you do not need to upgrade from m2 to m3 except if you haven't gone through so many things with your laptop that it's barely breathing you have tired it a lot you have squeezed out all the juices of this but these are very very specific cases i don't know what you should have done to your macbook pro m2 to need to upgrade to m3 but if you have an m1 this is maybe where you should think about it because apple has explained this as well we went through it through this video that from the m1 to m3 there is a big difference in their performance so this is where you should think about upgrading again macbook pro m1 is not a bad laptop it's not like the intel max you can still use it there's so many people that even with m3 out they still prefer their m1 because it's working fine they're doing their job and they don't need to spend more money on a new laptop where they have even an older one which is working perfectly fine so in conclusion to say that maybe you should upgrade from m1 to m3 or at least think about it but from m2 to m3 currently in these laptops there is no need to because first of all the upgrades are not that big like differences and also there is no need to because both of them will do perfectly fine okay guys that will be the video hope you enjoyed it comment down below which laptop do you prefer the macbook air or the macbook pro or maybe which one would you choose if you could go and get one personally i think both of them are good again as i say in every video really depends on what will you use your laptop for i mostly browse online edit my videos and do coding tasks so my laptop is perfectly good for that i think that the macbook air even will suit me enough for this maybe i will switch to a pro only because it has a little bit more ports but it's not like i'm using all the ports on my laptop anyway but that'll be the end of video i hope you enjoyed please smash that like button aka like this video share it with friends don't forget to subscribe to this channel turn on the bell so you'll be notified when i post new videos and I'm gonna see you next time. Bye!